foundation students feel a little bit neglected because every time these papers are done, nobody's talking about the foundation papers. But there's foundation students out there that want to know how that paper went. And I'm going to give you in this video my honest review of this paper. Now, before I start, however, I just want to share with you some feedback that I got from a few of my students. One particular student, who I'm not going to obviously name, was really upset. They just felt that this paper worked against them, that the exam board had changed everything and it was nothing like past exam papers. So this is something that I was really, really concerned about. I wanted to know if this was, uh, you know, if this had any substance or not. So that is something uh, that I will be looking at. So when I did get hold of the paper, I did have a look through it and I'm going to share with you, you know, some thoughts about it. But just generally, I didn't think it was as bad as some people made it out to be. Now, of course, it's very difficult looking at these papers as a maths teacher and even as, you know, a, a top maths student, in fact, because you could easily open up this paper and think, yep, easy, doable, good, great, because you're thinking in your shoes. You have to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's a foundation student. And whatever you want to say about them, there's, you know, people, not everybody likes maths. Not everybody gets on with maths. Sometimes this is not what they're destined to do. Not everybody should be a mathematician. Not everybody should be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. Right? Everybody has their own you know, strengths in particular things. And I'm sure you foundation students will, whatever it is, you'll find your way. Because uh, let me tell you something, because I see these comments a lot on social media. People saying, oh, you know what, foundation students have an IQ of a room temperature and things like that. And, and let me tell you something. And this is from, you know, stuff that I would normally share on my life school channel. And go check that out, by the way, if you don't know. I'll leave a link in, in, in this video. But I have seen foundation students who aren't so good at maths. Some of my own students have, who have been in my form later go on and become successful entrepreneurs. In fact, sometimes you might find, and this is not always the case, so don't go out there thinking, oh, mom, I can be a foundation student. Sir said that, you know, I'm going to be successful. But I have seen those top grade eight, nine students become workers for foundation students. All right. So the world works in very, very funny ways. So please just understand that some students, some people will have their own strengths in their own areas. All right. So I thought that this paper was generally not as bad as some people made it out to be. There were, in fact, let's have a look at some of the questions. So we started off with a nice and easy it's a typical page where you've got one markers and you know that they were good one markers this is what we expect however when you turn the page and straight away the next page goes up to a grade uh, not grade for four marks and but the question's okay it's just a two-way table the second part of the questions you know this is where most of the marks were for this question so maybe most students might not be able to access that second part and lose three out of the four marks. And that could be a problem because the first part's worth one. And then we go to another five mark question in uh, question seven. It's a bar graph and you have to some answer some information from there. But can you see there's a step up straight away on this paper? Oh, this is strange. Question 10, we have to round this number to the nearest 1000. That's usually those uh, first page questions. One marker again. And then it's got an estimation within that very same question. I just felt that was strange being number 10, almost a third of the way through the paper. Question 12, do you have this time table? You know, stuff that you should be used to, reading bus tables and things like that. Again, another five marker. So, you know, that may have frightened some students of thinking, oh, what's going on? Why are all these five markers? If I don't get this correct, that's it, it's gone. And I'll talk about uh, the grades itself um, and, you know, people are aiming to get grade four and do they feel that they've got enough marks or not but I'll talk about that um, towards the end so question 16 with the triangles here there's a lot going on so some students it might be a bit of a mouthful in fact students said that the wording of these questions just weren't friendly you know what they maybe have meant by this is just the the question itself and how it was presented it's not very friendly very foundation-y then you've got question 17 a recipe question. Now, one student said, oh, this was not the typical recipe questions. But looking at that, it is. That's what they ask you now. You know, they're not asking you uh, to make this many things or whatever. They just say, have I got enough ingredients? So yeah, we have seen those before. Maybe we've seen them on the higher paper 
and the end of the foundation paper because you know the foundation the higher they share like seven or eight questions which are on both you know they're like the common topics so maybe when you were doing your foundation revision you weren't going towards the end of the paper and those kind of questions because you would have seen questions like that stem and leaf now now this stem and leaf and then number 19 as well which is hdf again stuff that we see or we used to see at the front of the paper but here it is towards the end question 18 and 19 that's a bit mad so like if you get stuck on one of these big questions and it's thrown you off as it did with one of my students um you know you're gonna sit there feeling so much anxiety thinking oh my god this has gone pear-shaped now and your mind's gonna be clouded and you're gonna be in such a state that you're gonna come across these questions and you're gonna think they're hard, but they're questions that you can do. And this is what I say to students, go through the paper, don't answer them in order necessarily, just scan through the paper in the first few minutes and you know, highlight all the easy ones and do them first or things that you, you know, you're comfortable with, all right? Because question 20 comes along now with probability, five marker, question 21, another five marker with graphs here. And that is you know, the highest stuff right now. And then question 22 with six marks. So all together now you've got what, uh, 16 marks in these three questions. That's a lot of marks and they are quite wordy. This question 22 with this ratio and fractions and end to one, that is going to be uh, quite challenging. And maybe you might even have some algebra work to do. I don't know, I haven't done the questions and I'm not going to here because uh, that's not the point of this video. Yeah, that can you know frighten a lot of people here right now. So then question 23 now, and we got this standard form. And looking at that, some people may be used to, you know, like multiplying out the standard form, uh, the numbers at the beginning and trying to add the powers or something. But then it's, this is an addition, isn't it? So it's probably better off to make it an ordering number and then do it. That instruction isn't there to make it an ordering number. You've got to know to do that and then put it back into standard form as your final answer. Then question 25. Now, this is I want to actually highlight something that a student said to me. They said, Oh, there was this question with y equals mx plus c and you have to find the gradient which i did and then you know it goes and i knew that c was the y-intercept and but this graph didn't go through c and i'm looking at this question right now and this graph does go through c but this question the, the student was so much in this into this anxiety that they couldn't even see clearly and that the fact that there is a y-intercept that clearly on this diagram goes through so you have to just pick it up and read it and this is what happens when we start defeating ourselves in that very exam itself. And this is what, you know, I'm gonna to try to help you at the end, uh, after I finish the last question here, to try to overcome some of these things. In fact, I do have a video for that, so go and check it out on the channel as well, about confidence and how you should be confident as much as you can be in that exam. And then we go to the last and final question, 26, you've got the vectors here, nice question. Um, if, you know, if you've practiced your column vectors, then this should be good. So there we have it. Now, some students did say that, look, I revised stuff like factorizing quadratics. I even spent ages memorizing the uh, exact trig values and the table that you use to get that. And none of this came up. It didn't come up in the higher as well, those topics. So those, you know, not the exact trig values necessarily, but we can certainly expect some Sokotoa and maybe some Pythagoras and that sort of stuff in papers two and three. We definitely can expect factorizing quadratic. So if you have practiced all this stuff and you were expecting it, well, it didn't go in vain because you still got papers two and three to do. All right, so there's gonna be plenty of stuff that you can look forward to. Percentages didn't come up. Um, so percentages, but obviously with a calculator, make sure you're revising your compound interest stuff, your reverse percentages, finding percentages of an amount, those sort of things. And they like to ask those questions now, com comparing two different packages or something, using percentages and things like that. So overall, was this paper fair? Was it as hard as some of you made it out to be? I believe that it was a fair paper. You might have thought that it's not very fair. Um, there were some surprises, like I said, and there were some challenging uh, questions with the ratio and things like that, but there were plenty of um, accessible questions. Question is, and this has always been the problem with the foundation paper, in my opinion, is that you need so many marks to get a grade four and a grade five. And I just feel that foundation students, they get tired. And you know, you put all these uh, different questions, the easy stuff amongst the hard stuff, they may not be able to reach those questions because they've seen a hard question, got really panicked and don't go any further with that level of confidence. So if you had stayed calm, and you know being a bit more you know tactical strategic with how you tackled your questions then this is okay whether or not 
the grade boundary, and I know a lot of you guys ask about grade boundary, what's the grade for? Look, it's always based on uh, the exam, you know, that exam year and how students perform. It doesn't change too much from what it was in past years. It don't go dramatic changes. So have a look at the past uh, grade boundaries. And I do have videos that highlight the last few years. And, 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 you know, just look at that for a guideline. And that's it. So look, paper two now, that's what your focus should be on. And um, the topics, the kind of topics I've mentioned, maybe uh, start tackling those. Not maybe, definitely start tackling them. But just remember, they're going to be calculator base more likely. Although, although there are non-calculator questions where you don't have to use a calculator on the calculator paper. So yeah, anything that didn't come up um, that could potentially still be a non-calculator may, you know, look forward to that as well. So let me know guys how you found the paper. Was it easy? Uh, was it okay? Do you agree with me? Maybe you disagree with me. I'd like to hear it too because it's just my opinion. Understand that. All right. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.